Okay, so if, like, we took a horse's food and we made a sort of, like, you know, fake thing to wear on your face with it so you looked like something else, like a disguise, if you will, or, you know, maybe you could call it a guise. Would that be, a, like, you're putting on a guise so you have a, uh, hey, guys. So, look, I know, I know the title of this video seems a little bit unlikely. Let me explain. It's true. Probably. So with ZZCT, you have two steps, right? TTLL and TSLE. What I say in the title of this video is that you have about a 1 in 200 chance of getting optimal LSLL, or last slot and last layer, using ZZCT. So that's using either TSLE or TTLL and then just getting a skip for the other one. Is that actually optimal? Well, no, it's probably not optimal in terms of move count, but it is optimal in terms of execution time if you're using the best algorithms for ZZCT, which you should be if you're using it, because why would you use bad algorithms? So even if you have a high move count, you're still executing the algorithms in the fastest way possible. Now, it's well known that there's a 1 in 360 chance of getting a TTLL skip. So you'll just do your TSLE, and then you won't have anything else, you'll just have a solved cube. Now, that's an optimal last slot plus last layer, because if you're doing TSLE, which is the step right before TTLL, and then getting a TTLL skip, that means you're doing TSLE to orient the corners, and you're orienting them in the best possible way to orient them. If you aren't, then there's a better TSLE for you to be using. So, if you're orienting them in the best possible way, that means you're solving the cube in the best possible way if you get the TTLL skip. Same thing for if you get a TSLE skip, then you just do a TTLL. That's also optimal last slot plus last layer because that's just recognizing an LSLL case and then executing it with one algorithm. So I said there's a 1 in 360 chance of skipping TTLL, but how did I arrive at the 1 in 200 chance? Well, that's pretty simple. This was based on my calculations for what the likelihood of skipping TSLE is. I got it at about 1 in 448. Now, that could be wrong, full disclosure. I think it's right, but it could be wrong. Basically, I thought of it like this. With TSLE, you start with just your last slot. So, that means that in order for you to get a skip of TSLE, this edge already has to be inserted into the last slot. There's a 1 in 5 chance of that, because it could be here, 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 and here, and as far as I can tell, it has an equal probability of being in any of those places. After that, I just counted cases. So there are 16 TSLEs that aren't OCLLs, and then there's, what? Uh, seven. There are seven OCLLs, so seven plus 16 gives you 23 total different cases. Now it's 23, but each of those can be rotated four ways and give you a different case each time, so that multiplies the total by four. So you end up with five times four times 23. It's actually a little bit smaller than that because you have some mirrors. So for example, this OCLL case is mirrored with a U2, so either of those would be counted as the same, so that reduces the number of cases by one. There are two other TSLEs that can be mirrored in the same way, so that reduces it by another two, and then there are two TSLEs that actually reduce it by three each because they have full rotational symmetry. In the end, you have 448 cases, and sure, some of them are more likely than others, like as far as what you would recognize, but that 448 number takes into account all rotational symmetries, so they are all equally likely to come up, so you have a one in 448 chance of getting a TSLE skip. Then just multiplying that by the chance of a TTLL skip gives you about 1 in 200. It's rounded. It's actually more like 1 in 201 or 1 in 202, but it's it's around there. And yes, I'm in a stats class right now, so I know that I have to subtract the overlap between a TSLE skip and a TTLL skip, but that's literally just getting a solved LSLL after finishing your third F2L pair, and that, that's like never gonna happen. That's such a low probability case that you don't really even have to consider it in this. When I started learning ZZCT, I thought it was like a 1 in 360 chance of getting optimal last slot, last layer. Now I realize it's actually a little bit better than that because of recognizing TTLLs. Just another reason to switch to CT. And I did all that math today for fun. I was like, you know what would be fun to do today? Figure out the probability of a last slot plus last layer one look thing with ZZCT because I'm a nerd and I was bored. I actually was just sitting there doing all this math in my head. I had a calculator with me. I could have done all this math on a calculator, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna find the lowest common multiple of 448 and 360 in my head. By the way, it's 7,920, 7, if I remember correctly, something like that. But yeah, so that's about it for today's vlog. As far as I can remember, nothing else is supposed to happen today. So thanks for watching and wait, what's that over there? How did a frog and a bass get into my room? Also, why is the bass wearing a crown, guys? Somebody explain this to me, I'm very confused. And then the frog turned into another bass. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe if you watched yesterday's vlog, you would understand, but uh, whatever. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.